In this video of C Sharp Basics, we're going to be writing our first lines of code. We're also going to be organizing our code a little bit to make it easier to traverse throughout this series. So here we are at our main window, and I went ahead and double clicked on the program.cs file over here in my Solution Explorer, and that opens the program.cs file here in my code window. Under the static void main string arg statement, you'll find that there are a couple of brackets here. In between these brackets, we're going to type something. What we're going to write here is console.writeline and console.readline with a few different things included. So let's go ahead and start off with capital C, O, N. And as you see, as I'm typing the word console, we get some IntelliSense. This is Visual Studio's little helper to tell us that what it thinks what we're trying to type and make things go a little bit faster for us. Since console, which has been selected in IntelliSense, is in fact what I want, I can go ahead and hit the tab key on my keyboard and that will complete the word for me. Notice that console is capitalized. C Sharp does distinguish between lowercase and uppercase for all things. So if there was another class object or method or property that started with a lowercase c for console, then it would detect it as a completely different entity than the one that I'm trying to type here. So after I type console, I'm going to type the period. And you'll see that once I hit period, once again, the IntelliSense thinks that it knows what it is that I want to type. Here it thinks, at least for right now, that I might be wanting to do read line. But in fact, I want to do right line. And right line, once again, starts with a capital W. Now that I've typed a capital W, once again, IntelliSense thinks that it knows what I want to type. And sure enough, it's selected right line. So all I've typed is the capital letter W, and now I can hit the tab key, and it completes the word right line for me. One thing also to notice about right line is that right line is actually two words conjoined together with no spaces. So W-R-I-T-E-L-I-N-E, -E, with the first letter of each word being capitalized. In coding circles, this is known as Pascal case, where the first letter of each word is capitalized. It's a good thing to know about this Pascal casing, because later on when we write more complex things, we're going to want to name those things using the same Pascal casing. So after write line, I'm going to go ahead and use the parentheses. And you can see Microsoft Visual Studio already puts the ending parentheses for me. I didn't have to type that. That's just one of the things that Visual Studio does in order to ensure that your code is well maintained and that you don't have any sort of breaks in your code. It will often automatically type things out for you. Inside of these parentheses, we're going to put some quotation marks. And once again, you can see Visual Studio adds the end quotation mark. I only typed one quotation mark, and it went ahead and added the second. Inside of these quotation marks, this is something that we call a string value. And we will be talking about what string values are and other different types of values. But for right now, all you need to know is that this is just going to be some text that we want to display to the user. And that text that we want to display to the user is going to be hello world. And I'm going to go ahead and even put an exclamation point at the end because we're really excited about this. So after my console.write line hello world, there's one last thing we need to do. At the very end of the statement, we need to actually tell C Sharp that this is the end of a statement. And you do so by typing a semicolon. And you'll see that the red squiggly lines go away. If I take the semicolon out of here again, the red squiggly lines should reappear. A red squiggly means that Visual Studio has detected there is something wrong in the syntax of what you've typed. So you probably need to check wherever that squiggly line is for something you might have done wrong. In our case, we're forgetting that semicolon. On the next line after console.write line, we want to add another line. And this is going to be console.readline. At the end of console.readline, once again, we need to go ahead and add the parentheses and a semicolon. Congratulations, you've written your first lines of code and you've written your first fully functional application. Do you want to see how it works? First, let's save our application by clicking on the Save All icon up here. Once your project is completely saved, 
you can go ahead and click on the green start button right here. You can see that we now have a window on our screen that is a console and on our console it actually just says hello world and it's waiting for us to type something. In this window go ahead and press the enter key. You can see that the console window has gone away. The fact that we're back here at our code window and the console window has disappeared means that we are at the end of our application and it is exited. Since we plan on making some future changes to this application, you may want to start thinking about some of the organization you want. In our case, since I'm going to be writing a lot of the same code, but I need to have it in separate containers, I'm going to go ahead and create some folders in our project. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and right click on my project. I'm going to select add and then new folder. I'm going to go ahead and name this folder writing your first code. Now I'm just going to drag and drop the program.cs file into my new folder. You can see that program.cs has now been moved to within the writing your first code folder. One of the things that we need to do in order to make sure there won't be any conflicts with future code that we write is we need to not only move the file itself into this writing your first code folder, but we need to change the namespace to correspond with the new folder we wrote. Now don't worry, we will be talking about what namespaces are at a later point, but for right now, just follow along with what I do here. At the end of basic.course, I'm going to write period and then writing your first code. Notice that writing your first code is identical to the way that I've named the folder. You can see that this makes it easier for me to understand at a later point where this program file is actually being located. I can look at the namespace section and see that basic.course is the name of my project, while writing your first code is the name of the folder that the program file is in. This is one of the basic ways that you can help organize your code and make it easier to find the parts of your code that you're looking for at a later time. Since we changed the namespace to basic.course.writingyourfirstcode, we're going to have to also indicate to the application that this is the new location of where we want our program to start from. So we're going to need to go into our Projects Properties page by going to the Properties section of our Context menu, and then up in the Application section, our startup object needs to be changed to basic.course writing your first code dot program. Now that we've got that in place, we can go ahead and save all and then run our application again. As long as you've done everything as I just showed you, you should see the Hello World application running again. We can go ahead and click and hit the enter key inside of this console window and that will close and exit out of the application and bring us back to our Visual Studio window.